And now, uh, contrary to what it says on the programme, it's uh, Joran is speaking to us, but Blanche Fabry is not here, and it's Anja Lorenz who's going to be um, presenting with Joran. So, conference is open to all, mainstreaming open education through unconferences and bar camps. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, was there a second microphone? So not hard to guess that this is Anja and Liam Joran. And um, Blanche Fabry does all the work and we're presenting it. Say hello to Blanche in the next team, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> She's already location scouting for the next OER camps. And this is what we will talk about. And we'll begin with um, reading out uh, text from slides. Uh, since OER activities are mostly driven bottom-up, there has been a need for sharing questions, experiences and materials between players who have been isolated in their own institutions. This is an analysis on OER activities in Germany. These players found opportunities for sharing in cross-sector events and communities, especially the bar camp unconference format turned out to fit tremendously well, developing a strong German OER community. This is what uh, Jan Neumann wrote into a UNESCO report on OER in Germany. And th this was in 2017. And this is when we, doing the OER comes first, realized that this is a very German thing. And uh, we did not realize that this is something special. Uh, but we learned about this in the last month. And so we would like to present this approach to building a community of practitioners and a learning community in OER. Uh, we have three impressions. Um, we, we went just to say that we did not invent the bar camp format. It has been there before the OER camp started in 2012. And uh, we ourselves are doing different bar camps. What's your favorite bar camp at the moment? Uh, it's the Lübeck bar camp, uh, of course, by the way I'm organizing it. Sure it is. <laughs> and, um, we have three impressions, um, and each may take five minutes. First, how does it look like? This is really impressions. Uh, we have photos. How does it work? This is what Anya will explain. And uh, we can show you some numbers and figures about what we know about our participants. So uh, how does it look like? An unconference does somewhat look like a conference, but somewhat not. So this is uh, what people are doing when they are learning. It does not look like Germany, but it's a German uh, conference <laughs> when you <laughs> in Hamburg. Yeah. Um, um, you hold the microphone and I stick to this one. Okay. Is this okay for technical reasons? Anything? Is it okay? The man yes. Of the window yes. yes. Yeah. Thumbs up. Okay. And um, the first OER camp took place in Bremen 2012. And uh, there were around 80 uh, participants coming together for three days at the University of Bremen. And um, this is maybe half of them uh, finding together for planning their own sessions. So this is what we will learn in a minute from now. How does it work? You're building your own schedule for the whole conference. And here we have someone from uh, England who helped to build the OER movement. I don't know if anyone here finds him in the picture and can identify him. Yeah, it's Alistair Clark uh, who, uh, we invited to uh, present to the German growing OER movement what has already been done in the UK then. It was really, really helpful. Um, this is also what OER camps look like. This is a session uh, with three persons uh, discussing one topic. It can be a huge session <laughs> with um, eight participants, or uh, even more. So there are no fixed numbers, and there are no typical settings for what a session in an OER camp is. But what you find is that there are less uh, presentation and less panel formats and more discussions and um, conversations happening on OER camps. And sometimes also it's about doing and making and trying out and working together and collaborating on uh, specific questions. But we also have presentations. So this is a last slide on how they look like. And because they are very, very 
how to say it, open when it comes to how to design a session. So we always have a plan with certain rooms and where is each session will be, and there always has to be a column for somewhere else because someone wants to do something somewhere else, which, for example, can be in front of the building. Anya will continue with a 101 on how does a bar camp and an OER camp work. Yeah, okay. I uh, agreed to, to support you then for the talk because uh, we, um, I, I also organize bar camps and uh, I also have been on uh, four, four OER camps, I guess. And so uh, this is the difference between bar camps and uh, normal conferences. In conference, you have participants and speakers. So uh, there is a dist uh, distinct uh, roles for both. And in conferences, you have all our active contributors. And in Germany, we have the, the word uh, Teilgeber. Um, it's like uh, the normal uh, point participant is uh, called Teilnehmer, take, take part in a, in a conversation. And Teilgeber is t uh, giving something. Yes, it's, uh, it's a little bit a uh, word, word game. And also in uh, normal conferences, you have the schedule in advance of the conference, and you can look where you want to go to. But in uh, unconferences, you have uh, an empty schedule when you come in, and uh, the schedule is uh, made up in the first uh, uh, first hour or half an hour. Um, also in a conference, uh, there are presentations and panels, as Joran said, and in unconferences, there are more discussions, questions, workshops. So a session could also start with the question. So I have no idea on this topic, but I want to ask people uh, helping me uh, to, to get it underst uh, better understanding or to find a solution. And also, a conference are more formal, uh, not here, but in some conferences they're wearing suits and uh, say Mr. Dr. Professor, and this is not the case in uh, Germany. Um, as you maybe know, in Germany we have two kinds of uh, uh, saying uh, you to a person, do and see, it's more, more formal, and in, in Barcamps we all, uh, always say do. And yes, so in Barcamps, um, it's make um, you make the difference. You are responsible for an uh, interesting uh, schedule. You are in, uh, responsible for interesting topics. And if you leave and say, oh, this was not that good, it's your fault. Um, you don't need to prepare a presentation. So uh, making all the slides uh, is not possible. You can also stand in front and ask something. You can uh, hold something up. You can Google something in between. So it's uh, not, not uh, demanded for a scheduled plan. And uh, there can be as many sessions as there are rooms, um, if someone is uh, suggesting a session, and uh, sometimes even more if the weather is nice and you can go outside. Um, there are further rules that uh, there is a minimum of two attendances, so the speaker and uh, <laughs> uh, some people else, so otherwise the people can talk with themselves. Um, and, uh, and you can also provide several sessions, not at the same time, but after, uh, after each other. And uh, you should uh, give your session now and not tomorrow. So uh, the bar camps are mostly uh, on two days and you should not wait because maybe there's a question open at the end of the session and you can offer the next session at the next day. Um, and um, the most important uh, um, rule for me is if you can't uh, uh, contribute to the session anymore or it's not the topic that you thought it is about, you can go out of a session and it's no, uh, it's no uh, sign of uh, disrespect. Okay. And yes, uh, then there's, a t um, <laughs> there's this, uh, so many rules, by the way, at seven at the ten after the 10th. Um, yeah, um, the, um, you, have, you do not have a fixed timetable, but you have uh, fixed time slots. So if your session is over, it's, uh, it's sort of respect for the, the people who are coming afterwards to leave the, the room and do this uh, afterwards discussions outside. Every session uh, uh, ends after f 45 minutes. Um, there should be a documentary. So my, most time we have Etherpads or Google Docs uh, um, that where you can, we can document a session so people who decided for another session can look after it. Okay, that's what it looked like um, the session making at the OER camp in Berlin last year. So um, the, the schedule is empty. Everyone who wants to offer a session comes into a line. Uh, German like to stand in lines. And uh, then they pr uh, promote their sessions. And uh, they all, all raise their hand up who's interested. And they are uh, wrote into the session plan. So the session plan is empty at the first, uh, at the first date, at the beginning. And there's a link to a, a f future pr uh, documentation. 
and it is full at the end of the session planning, which is most uh, half or, or an hour after the start of the session planning. Okay, and Juran will talk about the feedback and evaluation of the OER camps. Mm -hmm. Um, we did one OER camp a year from 2012 to 2016, and in 2017 things changed because we got funding. And uh, we had the aim of mainstreaming OER, so we could do four OER camps in 2017, and we asked the participants a lot of questions in advance and afterwards for the feedbacks, and uh, there were some numbers and figures. Uh, we have more on the slides that you can read afterwards if you'd like to. Uh, we just want to point out some things. Um, this is the number of participants of sessions and of workshops over the years, and uh, I seen them first aggregated uh, in the preparation of this talk, so I just learned that we had 1,784 participants over the years, and uh, we will have the opportunity for four more OER camps in 2018. Um, just to give you some impressions, um, we have um, pretty um, equalized participation rates when it comes to, to gender. Uh, we ask about form of address, so we have about 5% that shows that's not my way of categorizing the world. And we have nearly 50% who prefer vegetarian food. So uh, this is probably a um, sign that the people coming to OER camps are not representative of, of German population. Um, what I really like about OER camps, and which really is helpful for, for forming a learning community, is that they come from very diverse backgrounds and with very diverse level of knowledge. So we asked them about uh, their own knowledge um, and 59% said they are beginners and 70% uh, Twenty-seven percent said they have basic knowledge, and um, you see that um, twenty-seven percent also said they have advanced knowledge, and some of them even describe themselves as experts. But that's not normally what we see when when we do a conference. Um, normally, the the beginners and the experts have different places to go to. Um, this is also describing the diverse field uh, when it comes to, to participants from OER camps. We asked them, when did you consciously notice the term open educational resources for the first time? And you see that many um, participants have come to the debate within the last years, 2015 to 2017, but there were also some, some early adopters that noticed uh, the term in 2010, which was really early in Germany. Um, they also come from different uh, educational sectors, so this is also interesting because we don't have conferences or w meetings uh, from certain sectors, but they all meet uh, at the OER camps. Mm, this is what people answered when we asked them about their primary area of activity. So most of them said they are into teaching, but uh, there are also many people into producing, uh, distributing uh, materials. This was somewhat, somewhat surprising, um, but maybe people thought they should answer that they have a pedagogy background when they uh, ask about their interests in OER. So this is by far the most given answer. Is I'm primar primarily interested is pedagogy and didactics. Um, and less is about technology and infrastructure, but somewhat it is. And, and uh, what may be surprising is that the, the jurisdiction law questions are really in the background. In Germany, it would be surprising. This is uh, a sign that we are not so inclusive. Um, we asked our participants, what would you suggest to be the standard OER license? And you see that they, um, nearly all of them exclude licenses which exclude non-commercial usage, usage. And this probably is because um, the OER community in Germany is not very inclusive when it comes to not inclusive licensing. <laughs> so there probably are many um, advocates for NC licensing, but they are very much in the background and not as loud at the conferences and meetings of the OER community. So. One last slide, um, because we have, in Germany at least, 
hello to the stream, uh, discussion if there are always the same folks running around at OER camps. And I know this feeling because I know, ah, I've seen them, him or her four times in the last year on OER camps, but numbers don't show this. So we asked them, have you attended an OER camp uh, in the last years? And 300 um, out of the, the participants in, in this question said, no, not before 2017. So you recognize familiar faces, but probably this is a bias because you recognize them and you don't uh, look at the faces you're not familiar with. This should have been the last slide. This is good for reading afterwards. Okay, thank you. Oh, of course. Um, thanks, that, that was a really interesting conversation. I've never been to a bar camp and uh, it's good to see that even somebody as old as me could fit in, so that was <laughs> good. Uh, have we any questions, please? Yes? Thank you. There's a lot to be said for structure, top-down structure. So if you let it, the people there do it in a bottom-up way, then don't you run the risk that the more, shall we say, proactive, vociferous people are going to actually put a structure there that's not generally interesting to the people? How do you control that? I think the answer is not at all. So there are, there are people, uh, I have the feeling also, not only in the OER camps, also in other bar camps that are presenting every time with their topic and we think it's valid. Uh, mostly we have enough space to uh, recognize everyone. Sometimes uh, there are slots open, so you can uh, introduce other topics. Um, maybe we have a little trick. Um, there are bar camp rules, and the bar camp rule says if you have never been to a bar camp before, you have to do a session. And this is a little bit of pressure for new people to uh, be engaged to give a session. And of course no one is checking it, but um, I think so many people are thinking, oh, maybe I have to give a session, I don't know. This, uh, yeah. I think one one second answer could be that there are not only bar camps on OER, so we also have yep. conferences on OER. And in 2017, we introduced to the bar camps uh, pre-planned workshops that are especially uh, addressed to newbies at the scene. So uh, we learned that it's not only important that there are newbie sessions, but they don't see, uh, if they don't see anything in it advance, it's only the format they don't know, they don't know too much about open education resources, they don't trust this conference format. And we learned that they trust the format if there are even uh, only one or two hours of workshops planned and announced in advance. Any other questions? My, my question would be, has anyone been to a bar camp? Martin did. Which one? It was actually more of a kind of unconference. It was uh, open knowledge in Berlin. So it's, it's, it's obviously a German thing, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> I must, uh, just my quick reflection on it. I enjoyed some of it, but I also found it really frustrating. And I, I came away thinking, God, I want a PowerPoint. Just someone to tell me something. Because mm -hmm. at one session, we were all sitting around in a circle and people started Let's let's start rapping, and, and you know I'm I'm British. I'm not going to start rapping at any stage. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I can, but perhaps that's good. Perhaps it kind of pushes you out of your comfort zone. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from my own experience, it's also easier to follow a normal conference where you have slides and you can sit down in a cinema, um, as to take part in a bar camp. At the end of a bar camp day, I'm always tired right. because I have to rethink all the uh, very very mixed stuff. Uh, for myself and implications for my own work, so, yeah. Um, um, maybe this is one uh, interesting uh, thing from the feedback we got. It's bar camp sessions are lucky bags. Topic descriptions need to be more precise. This is always one thing that people argue that they did not get what they were expecting. But uh, my impression is that's not always the case in conferences too. Um, I, is there any issue, because sometimes in order for people to attend conferences, they need to be, to get the funding to attend a conference from a university, they need to say they're presenting a paper. Mm -hmm. Do you get, come across any issues that people can't go to a bar camp because they're not presenting a formal publication and paper? Mm -hmm. um, 
for the for the OER conferences uh, camps in the last year, uh, we had the luck that there is a funding program uh, not only for the OER camps but also for OER projects. And for this is what's no problem to say, hey, I go to the OER bar camp. And from my own institution, I am always safe if I say, hey, I offer a session. Yeah. But, um, but your institution is very progressive. Yes, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm sure. Yeah. People have this problem. Yeah, people have this problem. And um, for a second idea, uh, in Germany, we have in most uh, federal countries the option to have an educational holiday, Bildungsurlaub, uh, where you can tie five days in addition to your normal holiday if you're doing some further education stuff. So uh, I am hoping that the 2018 bar camps are uh, re uh, listed in this uh, options for the educational holidays. Hello to Blanche, uh, Blanche who's... Uh, <laughs> hopefully organizing is this at the moment. Mm -hmm. And so I can go to three bar camps, uh, OER camps, and, uh, except of one. Mm -hmm. And I think mostly it's also in further education option for teachers. So they, mm -hmm. they have it in their lists. Are we any, any other questions? Mm -hmm. Well, no. Right, well, I, I had a sort of question and a sort of comment. One was, I really liked the, the way you presented it because and what you've said in answer to the questions, because it really shows the tensions between structure and mm. agency. Mm. And, you know, nobody's going to get that right for everybody mm -hmm. anyway. But if you're sufficiently reflective, then you're going to continue to mm -hmm. flex and make it as, um, as uh, sort of available to uh, as many people as possible. Uh, the second was a question was, I was trying to compare it with things that happen in my locality and they tend to be outside of um, universities. So there's something mm -hmm. called Mad Lab in Manchester, which is a digital lab that has lots of activities loosely associated okay. with yeah. universities, but it's run independently. And I wondered if there was a certain local feel to it that all people had to do was get on the train to attend it. So the costs were not huge for those people. I don't know if, that's, if, if you had people coming from a yeah. far distance. Yeah. I think this is changing now when we have four OER camps uh, in a year, in 2017, 2018, because we could place them in the north, south, west, east of Germany. But we're uh, always, in all bar camps I know of, trying to make it more inclusive by not having any participant fee. So it's always uh, only uh, sponsored and um, uh, the, the engagement of people uh, who, who carry this. And we had for some bar camps, not only the OER camps, uh, a budget for if you cannot afford uh, taking part in it. So at the edu camp in, in Neuhalinger Siel, uh, uh, we had this, and we have the edu camps, which is th like the mother of all educational bar camps in Germany. It has now taken place 22 times, and um, we are trying to combine this to be very family friendly. So in uh, one place where we have this uh, every second time, we have also um, uh, accommodation there. And now we made it to have, I think, 25% of the participants are younger than 18 years old. And they provide their own sessions, which is really fascinating. Well, thanks very much for an excellent talk. If we could show our appreciation, we might still get ahead in the lunch queue. OK.